uh, welcome to this particular module. Uh, now we are also uh, in between our theory classes, uh, we are using some experimental class right and today uh, we will show it to you how to install a oxygen plasma system. Now, uh, this oxygen plasma system uh, is a system which uses as it name says oxygen, uh, it uses a vacuum and creates a plasma and this system is used for bonding PDMS with your silicon or PDMS with glass. Now, uh, I have already discussed that there are different kind of bonding methods, one is silicon to silicon bonding, another is silicon to glass bonding, another one is glass to PDMS bonding. So, uh, when you have PDMS, PDMS is used for creating microfluidic chips right. So, uh, today we will show from the installation side that how to install an oxygen plasma system and uh, uh, when you when you use oxygen plasma system you have a uh, you can tweak the power, you can tweak the uh, pressure and uh, you can tweak the time. So, three things you can uh, edit or you can change it and depending on your uh, application this uh, time variation, pressure variation and power variation have to be taken care. Uh, we will see uh, by taking an ex actual example of uh, microfluidic chips uh, and at that time I will ex uh, explain you where exactly we are using this particular system. Today you focus on the lab class and uh, I will see you in the, in the next lab module which will be on some other experimental class till then you take care. If you have any question uh, you ask uh, us through NPTEL forum, uh, I will request now my student Anil to take that particular lab class where we will show you the oxygen plasma system. Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this module. Today it is a very interesting module. Uh, we have uh, uh, planned to show you installation of a very uh, useful equipment that is uh, used in a clean room. Uh, we have uh, just opened the carton for the oxygen plasma system here. So, oxygen plasma is a very uh, multi-purpose system that can be used uh, for surface activation, surface cleaning. Let us say you have a substrate or a glass substrate, you want to clean it. So, oxygen plasma can be used for that. Uh, it is also used for surface enhancement, surface activation uh, in order if you want to coat antibodies or other materials on top of glass. Uh, another important use of oxygen plasma system is to bond PDMS membranes to the glass substrate. So, let us say if you are making microfluidic devices and you have uh, patterned uh, your electrodes or sensing material, sensing layer on a glass substrate and you want to overlay a microfluidic channel on this glass substrate. Uh, how do you attach this microfluid, uh, microfluidic membrane which is more often use, uh, made using PDMS onto this glass substrate? How do you attach those two or how do you uh, stick those two together? So, that is usually done in the most efficient way using an oxygen plasma system. It is called plasma bonding. Uh, so, we keep the layer of uh, uh, PDMS on this glass substrate and then we keep it inside the plasma system and the, the two layers bond. So, we will be showing you a bonding process eventually, but first step what we are going to do is we will actually open up this carton and we will set it up here so that you know how when you set up a clean room, uh, what are the processes involved, what are the things that you should take care while you set up a system. So, this main box here is the chamber of the uh, plasma system. There is, uh, this is the chamber, we will be showing it to you. This is a cylinder, uh, this is a pipe that will be connecting the vacuum system to this chamber. So, vacuum system is also here, uh, next to it, we will show it to you, it is there inside. Then another important thing that we need is an oxygen cylinder, which will also be there, we will be connecting and showing to you. Oxygen cylinder, uh, vacuum chamber, or an, a vacuum uh, system, uh, a chamber for creating the plasma. Uh, are the main components of an oxygen plasma system. Now, let us dive into the installation and then I will run you through it. So, we are uh, setting this thing up. Uh, so, the chamber is there. Uh, we have just opened the bag and kept it now. You can see how uh, a little bit sophisticated it is. We will tell you each, what each port does in, a, in due course of time when we actually show you the bonding process. Uh, so, now as you observe they have not actually gowned or they are not wearing sugar because right now we have suspended the activity of the clean room because we are installing an equipment. So, that is the protocol when you are installing equipment you actually uh, suspend all functional activity in the clean room. Then you install it, check everything and then restart all the cleaning process and you again follow the protocol of gowning and uh, coming in. So, that is uh, the next one there is the uh, vacuum system. So, he will connect the vacuum system to the uh, chamber. Mm. 
So this is an oil based vacuum system, there are uh, oil less vacuum systems also. So as we have seen we were trying to assemble the system, uh, we have now assembled the uh, plasma bonder system and uh, this is the main unit, this is the vacuum pump and uh, we have the oxygen cylinder behind, behind me. Uh, you, the blue, blue tube that you can see here is the oxygen supply that is going connected to the back side of the main unit. Okay. Now uh, what is this? I told you that plasma cleaner or plasma bonder is used to clean the substrate, activate the substrate, uh, surface modify a substrate before coating and all. It's a, it's a standard material processing technology. Uh, it is also conventionally used in biomedical devices, especially in microfluidic devices <coughs> to bond channels, micro channels made with PDMS onto glass substrate. This I had already told you before. Before I get into how this system is, how does it operate and showing you a live demo and all, you need to first understand what is plasma. Okay, this as you know is oxygen plasma. So but what is plasma? Plasma is any gaseous substance, okay, it can be the air which has all, all the constituents of it, nitrogen, oxygen, argon and all, or a particular gas, let's say oxygen in this case, oxygen that is in the plasma state. So what is plasma state? It, it is rich in, so in a normal gaseous state, uh, the gas has only molecules, okay, the oxygen molecules, O2, O2 molecules will be there. Now insert in the plasma state, when you apply any electric field or RF energy in this case, we are using RF energy here, RF is a radio frequency, radio frequency energy, the gaseous mixture gets ionized. When I say ionized, what it means is that the potential is so high that the electrons in the molecule, the electron, electronic cloud in the molecule gets gains enough energy to escape the attraction of the nucleus and they enter the com common space between the molecules and thus the, the whole confined volume of the gaseous mixture gets charged with ions, with electrons. There is a lot of things that happen in a plasma, the electrons will be there. Uh, char charged ions will be there, molecular ions will be there, atomic ions will be there. What, when I say atomic ions, it is the O2 be, with the energy becomes O, o atoms, o, o atoms and the, uh, those atoms also get ionized. Okay, so the atomic ions will be there, molecular ions will be there, moving electrons will be there, normal oxygen molecules will be there. It's a mixture of lot of uh, entities. Okay, such a, such a mixture is called plasma. So it is actually quite uh, active, such a uh, plasma system is quite active and if you place some substrate on it, these free moving electrons and atoms have the property to, uh, what do you call, it, modify whatever substance is in it, in the environment of the plasma. Let's say I keep a glass substrate, if there are some impurities on top of it, this plasma will actually, because of so much things that are there in the plasma, it will go onto the surface and clean the slide, glass slide. So that is what happens, it's a, in a very common way that is what a plasma system does. So we have oxygen plasma here, okay. Another thing is when I tell about plasma, the biggest thing that anybody who has studied science uh, in at least till class 10th or 12th that comes to their mind is that color. So plasma has a unique color uh, for different properties, let's say argon plasma, oxygen plasma, if, if whatever, if you make plasma out of different entities, they will have specific color, okay. So oxygen plasma has a kind of pink color, we will be creating plasma here today, it will be very interesting for you to watch, we will create plasma today, how the process and all we will see. So the plasma has a unique color, why does different materials have different color? This is because in a very crude way I will tell, there are a lot of processes that are happening that emits this color. But in a very simple way, if you break it down, I told you that we are applying high potential or RF energy uh, to supply that energy, the, to transfer that energy onto the oxygen molecules, the electrons in the oxygen molecule, right? So the electrons escape. It's a continuous process of giving energy, releasing energy and all these things are happening. So the electrons escape the outer nuclei, they go out so that they have gained energy. But after some time, they lose energy and they come back to the ground state. In this process, they release energy, okay, that is H nu, you know, right, from uh, Planck's uh, theory and all, HC by lambda. So, the, when this uh, movement to a higher energy state and coming back to a lower energy state happens, this energy is released usually in the form of visible light. That light 
is what we see as a plasma color so how how is the plasma color different for different materials there is this is because each molecule has a different radius radius in the sense the atom itself has a different radius the nucleus i mean not atom the nucleus itself has a different radius because the nucleus consists of different number of protons and neutrons for each atom oxygen has some defined amount oxygen atom is a bigger uh, atom than let's say hydrogen atom uh, but and the oxygen molecule ha is even bigger and there is an electronic cloud surrounding it so the energy with which the oxygen molecule or the oxygen at atom attracts the electron and keeps it within its control is different from how a hydrogen atom keeps its electron within its control so that energy is fundamentally released as a light right how i told you before so because of the difference let's say for hydrogen let's say it's i am i am i can't remember the exact number let's say it's 10 kilo, 10 10 electron volts in hydrogen and if it's let's say 40 electron volts in oxygen the electron that is excited and comes back to the ground state will release more energy in the case of oxygen than hydrogen because of this binding energy it's called binding energy because this binding energy is more in oxygen because of this as you know that if higher energy is towards the ultraviolet range hc by lambda so when lambda is less when lambda is less the energy is more if you take the visible light you are red is towards the infrared spectrum which is higher wavelength and your ultraviolet spectrum which is to the left of your visible spectrum is the higher energy lower wavelength range that is why because oxygen plasma it's around pinkish in color it is more towards the bluish region than the red region because it is of little bit higher energy so if you take another material you make a plasma out of it it will have its own characteristic color so uh, you might be thinking why we are going before you understand any system especially systems that deal with vacuum you should understand out and out the basics of whatever is whatever components are there in the system even if it may not be required for your day to day operation with the system this is because you should you should be able to troubleshoot if some issue comes up uh, that this is the reason behind this happening and you can you should be able to fix it and these are all very uh, safety regulated systems you have to be very careful in handling them and you are handling oxygen also it is uh, explosive gas so you have to be extremely careful while handling and big, uh, with great responsibility it is also a power like you tell in spider man with great power comes great responsibility this has is a very very powerful system we can lot of uses but you should handle it with care one part of handling it with care is understanding what is going on you are not uh, let's say if you are handling an equipment uh, there are two ways of handling one a uh, somebody can be trained to handle an equipment they will be a technician they might not know exactly what is happening or you can be a scientist who is handling the equipment and you know exactly what is happening and you will be able to even suggest improvements in how the equipment is designed that is how fundamentally throughout history new systems have been developed okay this oxygen plasma has come through has become a system like this after the pain and brainstorming of lot of scientists and technicians everyone has contributed so technicians would contribute to how how easily they are able to use an equipment how intuitive the controls are uh, those things they give feedback a scientist would give feedback in how you can improve the system how you can improve its range of operation how you can improve its versatility of operation in what all fields you can apply so this is how systems get developed so that's the overall idea about the plasma system correct now coming to workflow of how we uh, test this system i told you that this is an oxygen plasma system and we have a chamber i will show you all the things later plasma will be created in a chamber if it has a definite volume now when you open a chamber it will be filled with normal air our normal air which has all nitrogen oxygen argon everything now uh, it is very difficult to uh, control a plasma and uh, what you call control the extent of etching or cleaning that it does if you try to create plasma from normal air and and more importantly uh, the problem is that uh, you apply a particular r of energy if it if it's one species of gas that is there you know what is the r of energy that you have to apply for it to become plasma you, uh, when i show you you will see that exactly at after a particular r of energy r of power it becomes a plasma now if you try to do the same in air normal air 
you don't know there are a lot of constituents there is oxygen there is nitrogen you cannot fix a particular rf energy level to for for the plasma to form so it's very random that is why we need a vacuum system okay we we have a vacuum system first we take out all the air that is there in the chamber so that is the baseline there the, we create vacuum once we create the vacuum what we do is we let in our air or our gas species for which we are going to create plasma in this case it is oxygen so what we do we create vacuum sufficiently large vacuum using the vacuum pump here once the vacuum is of satisfactory level you let in oxygen into the chamber at that point you can see the pressure increasing initially when you are creating vacuum pressure will drop then you can see the pressure increasing because the oxygen molecules are coming in so the oxygen molecules come in so they fill the air now it's a more definite chamber you know that this chamber is now con con constituted most 99% of oxygen so it is controllable especially in such systems uh, the amount of robustness is measured by how well you can control the system okay how how much of the control of the system is in your hands so such that is why the system is designed in such a way that you can exactly tune your system to perform in the way you want it to perform okay so we have a chamber we create vacuum inside it then we let in oxygen air into it after this what we have to do is we have to apply rf power so rf power is just basically applying up electric potential in the gaseous mixture through radio frequency coil so inside the chamber there is a coil that is around the chamber the chamber itself is made of quartz glass and there is a coil outside the quartz glass that supplies voltage into the gaseous mixture okay and this is rf rf energy transmission so it's like a wireless energy transmission to the oxygen uh, species and it starts becoming plasma then what we do is we will slowly increase the rf power and at one point of the rf power it becomes plasma and you will start seeing a glow after that when you increase the power the glow becomes brighter and brighter okay that shows the energy of the uh, plasma that is getting stored energy that is getting stored in the plasma and the etching power or the cleaning power of the plasma here one thing to notice you cannot indefinitely increase your rf power because there is always a, a tripping point on any device it will get just get tripped another thing that to notice this is radio frequency uh, plasma generation so it's about uh, transmission transmission lines okay so in transmission lines there is this idea called forward power and reverse power so you have it's called in through impedance matching uh, you deliver some power at a frequency rf frequency here it is 13.56 megahertz at a particular rf frequency you are delivering power to a load now because it is a energy that is transmitted over a frequency there is always a reflection of energy that happens that is measured using this reflection parameter gamma you might have studied uh, earlier uh, earlier in your uh, engineering time so so there is a reflection that happens now this reflected power goes back to the system that is supplying the power now if that reflected power is more it creates current within the system that is supplying power and can cause burning of the wires and all that is connected so our design objective is to always reduce the reflected power and make sure that the forward power or the delivered power only is maximum so when we show you we will show you how we have tuned this system to deliver maximum forward power and minimum reverse power and these are the fine fine things that you need to take care while you operate the system so we saw we saw that we have a chamber we vacuum it we fill oxygen inside it then we when we apply rf power inside it okay and plasma gets created before all this you have to load your substrate inside because after before before you close your chamber you have to load your substrate inside then you do all these things then you keep it for a defined time and the substrate gets cleaned and then you take it out this is the overall operation of the plasma chamber now we will get into individual blocks of the actual system and see let's see whether we can create plasma so now we are going to the fun part uh, let's try to operate the system and create plasma in the oxygen plasma system so as i'm just repeating we have the main system here i will get into details of each of these interfaces soon so we have the main system here uh, i will go into details about each of the system each of the sub parts of the system later 
So to this system is connected the vacuum pump. This is an oil based vacuum pump. It's a rotary pump and uh, the, the pump tube or from which the air is sucked out is this. It is connected to the main system. Okay, and then the power to the pump comes from a main supply unit on this board. So we just need to connect the power supply cord of this vacuum pump to this main unit and power will come to that from the main unit. Okay, and then we have the oxygen cylinder here. So from where the oxygen supply goes to the main unit. So for demonstrating to you, we have kept the oxygen cylinder here. But as per safety regulations, oxygen cylinder should be kept outside the lab in a utility room properly chained. But because we have to show you that cylinder connection goes like this, we have kept it here. This is not how it should be operated. Uh, so oxygen uh, tube is connected there and uh, supply will go. Okay. So these are the three main things that are required for the system to operate. So now let's get into understanding the main uh, chamber and oxygen plasma main system. Okay. I have not powered it on. Before I power on, let me show you what are the individual components of this. So main, the heart of it is where we actually use it is the chamber. This is the chamber. Okay. It's a, a magnetically uh, sealed chamber. So I'm pulling it. So there is a magnet here and here magnetic attraction is there because of the, because of which it gets sealed properly. This is the chamber. Let's zoom into the chamber now. So now we have zoomed into the chamber. You can see uh, it is a two liter volume chamber. Uh, the dia of this is around three inches. Uh, 4 inches actually almost 3.8 inches and then the volume is around 2 liter inside now if you see look closely you can see a coil that is running around it there is a coil that is the RF coil we supply RF energy we transfer RF energy to the oxygen through this coil okay that is the RF coil which creates the plasma and if you look at the end of it you can see some holes so that is a that those are the holes through which air is sucked out there is a big hole that is from where air is sucked out by the vacuum pump. There are two small holes, right? Those are gas inlets for giving two different gases. The system allows for giving two different gas inlets. So you can have a mix of two gases to create plasma, which is sometimes useful. So two gas inputs are there. Then finally, there is a vent port through which you can vent. So those are the inside you can see the ports. Now let's zoom out. Now this one is the interface panel which is a touch display where we switch on and we can see how to control the things now this one bottom is the RF control RF control port these two uh, what do you call it? Uh, indicators are the flow indicators for the gases this is gas in A and gas in B I told you that there are two gas inlets for each of the gas inlets there is the flow indicator flow meter here we can see what is a flow rate at which the gas is coming in okay and we can fix it by controlling the knob here okay now this is the RF control I told you right separately if you want to switch on the RF you have to power on it here and you can set the RF power what is the megawatt power that you want to give uh, what is the RF power that you want to give that you can fix through this knob and I told you that the return power has to be minimized only the forward power has to be maximized should be maximum so that return return power minimization is done through this tune and load i told you also that reflection is dependent on the load depending on the load value the reflection parameter changes so your load has to be adjusted so that it is equivalent to whatever typical load that you will place inside your chamber and depending of adjusting the load and tune values you can have minimize the result reflected uh, power and maximize your delivered power or forward power okay this is the rf uh, power after all this any such equipment will have a safety button safety stop or emergency stop button so that is emergency stop button here this if you pull the system will shut down immediately okay let's turn on the system now you can see the system booting once it powers on yes uh, we have powered it on so it is booting system is booting starting and you will get the interface okay now the interface is on now we need to switch on the plasma control also so I am switching it on you can see here the plasma control coming up that sound you can see and you can see a display on the plasma control 
that is 150 watt forward power and the RF is off that is the overall status 150 forward power and off that is maximum RF power that it can deliver and off state right now we are not touching this now let's look at the interface so if you look at the interface there are a lot of things that are there and I will tell you how, how to operate that now the first thing as I told you is to create the vacuum inside the chamber correct now if you see under the vacuum tab you can see that the pressure is 189140 pascal ok so that is like it is at normal atmospheric pressure ok and uh, the vacuum is not created now left of it you can see the options turn on pump turn off pump that this pump is a vacuum pump when I click turn on pump this pump will turn on and start sucking air out or creating vacuum inside the chamber that time you will see this pressure dropping it will drop to tens of pascals ok first step for us when we are trying to make the plasma is that we will create we will switch on the pump and we will see the pressure dropping to tens of pascals from 188,928 pascal ok once that is done next part for us will be to the gas gas inlet we have already connected gas we have switched on the open the gas cylinder oxygen cylinder but we have not opened the valve for the inlet of the gas cylinder inside so we have to open the valve for the gas cylinder that will be our next step that is here so there is separate controls for gas 1 and gas 2 we have connected our oxygen to gas 1 so once we have created the vacuum next step for us is to in uh, let the oxygen come in ok so uh, once the oxygen starts coming in you will see the pressure going up again that is because the oxygen that we are pushing in is reducing the vacuum that is being created that is an indication that the oxygen is actually going in I am just telling you so we create vacuum by turning on the pump then we will see that the vacuum will go down then we will open the inlet for the oxygen the gas will come in as the last step no second last step second last step is we switch on the RF power when we switch on the RF power we can see the volt the RF power that is delivered here it is showing us 150 watt that we will control from the knob below which I showed you earlier we will see it again now I will turn on RF power you can see the uh, RF power that will be delivered we will keep it at around 50 watt ok then as we adjust the RF power we will start from very low RF power and we will see at some RF power the plasma getting created ok once the plasma is created we can leave the plasma for some time to act on the substrate first off we will not put a substrate we will just create plasma and see then we will put a substrate also and see once your cleaning action or bonding action is done cleaning is done then the next step is you the ox already oxygen is inside right you have to vent out the oxygen and remove the vacuum that is created so that's last part is to open air here open air option is there that will open the air in outlet valve and allow the air to come in basically because it is vacuum inside so air will come in and expel the oxygen out so that is a, these are the main controls for the plasma to form on the right side are some programming options where you can time your clean like you can say that I want to clean for 5 minutes so you can time your clean and the plasma will be on for 5 minutes and then it will shut off ok and there are some other options also which are not really important so this, this area is a major part uh, for us to create the plasma ok as you can see there is a small sound that is coming the RF is system is on but we are not actually delivering any power so let's do the first step we have to switch on the pump it will take out the air from inside the chamber ok so let's do it I am going to turn on the pump I am going to click turn on so you can hear the sound of the pump operating ok now you can see the pressure dropping here see it is rapidly dropping 19,000, 18,000 1600, 400, 300, 200, 100, under 100 now. The pressure is dropping continuously. Let it get down to 10, under 10 Pascal. Then we will switch on the oxygen supply. 
so from 188400 pascal immediately within like 2 3 seconds it has come down to 24 pascals okay let's wait till it comes below 10 or at least in the range of 10 pascals so as you see okay when this happens i will explain something else to you so while this uh, comes down i will explain some very in a small interesting thing uh, to you so as you see uh, as you saw that the pressure pascal e value uh, dropped very rapidly from that very high value to a reasonable low value of 100 pascals but after that it takes lot of time to reduce 1 by 1 pascal why is this so this is because when you start off you are what is vacuum creation it's basically you are removing atoms and molecules of different gases from the milieu and taking out taking it out and creating a empty chamber ideally okay so as initially when there are a lot of molecules it is very easy to take them out because there are enough number of molecules to take out consider imagine that you are swimming for fish in the ocean and the fish are the molecules if there are a lot of fish in the ocean you just throw your net lot of fish will come when you start off okay so next time in the same ocean if you try to catch fish the number of fish has reduced so your and if your goal is to make the number of fish in the ocean zero it becomes more and more difficult for you to remove that remaining fish because they are very difficult to come by because they are it's a vast space and the fish are very less in number so it the vacuum pump has to exert more energy to extract that last remaining molecules that are creating that defined pressure that is why the pressure drops from very high value to a reasonable low value quite fast then after that going below each each pascal is difficult because it becomes increasingly difficult to extract molecules from that milieu because they are very less in number you have to put work on the system to take out that molecule they have to search for that molecule and take it out that's why it takes time so now let's see what is the pressure it has gone to so the pressure has dropped to 10 pascals okay now it's time for us to let in oxygen so when i switch on the oxygen open gas 1 you can see you can you observe the pressure there the pressure will increase because of the oxygen that is being pushed inside okay so i am going to press open gas 1 so we have pushed in oxygen oxygen inside you can see the pressure slightly increasing okay so you can see that it is increasing it has become 22 23 pascals okay so i will not keep it that much i'll reduce it a little bit we'll keep it to 15 pascals okay that control i am doing using the flow meter below which i had shown you before okay so i have kept it at 20 pascals uh, this is when the with the oxygen in okay to confirm that this is what is happening let me just close the gas valve now okay that means we are not supplying gas so it should again go back to the low pressure so i am closing the gas valve i have closed the gas valve you can see the pressure will drop from 22 pascal slowly it will drop Yeah, twenty one has become twenty. Slowly, it will become nineteen pascal. It takes some time, as I explained before, to reduce that uh, uh, molecules. See, it has become nineteen pascal. So, like this, it will reduce. Let's not. We don't have time to show you that much. So, I will open the gas valve again. Okay. so i have opened the gas valve again so we have set the flow so it will go back to again that value of 22 or 24 pascals of oxygen
okay so we have kept oxygen is there okay some defined amount of oxygen is there at some uh, pressure it's difficult to control it so now this shows that there is oxygen okay now we have created vacuum we have allowed oxygen to come inside so next step is to switch on the rf power okay so let's switch it on i'm going to press turn on rf power so i have turned on the rf power okay so uh, we have turned on the rf power okay now uh, you can see the chamber and you can see the control okay now in the control you can see that forward power is zero and the return power is also zero okay let's now focus on the rf control okay now uh, we are looking at the rf control now it is zero forward watt and zero return watt now this is the knob to adjust the rf power so let me increase the rf power 1 watt forward 2 3 4 5 so return return power is not there so this is good condition so it is tuned properly okay now now let's so i like this i will keep increasing the rf power okay now you you need not see here now let's look at the chamber where the fun acts fun happens okay let's zoom in on the chamber so now now we are uh, looking at the chamber okay now rf power is 5 watt you don't see anything special happening inside the chamber right now correct now let me increase the rf power now it is 6 watt 7 watt 8 9 i am slowly increasing it it is 15 watt now forward power but the return power has become 12 so i need to adjust it okay now you can see slight pink color coming in the chamber so you can see a light pink color coming in the chamber now that is at, at 15 watt uh, rf power let me increase the power 16 18 you can see that the intensity of the plasma is increasing so i will increase and keep it at 50 watt rf power you can clearly see the plasma inside now it is pink in color this is the oxygen plasma that has been created so now you can see it properly pink color plasma inside at 36 watt rf power i will make it i am tuning it whenever uh, return power comes i will tune tune the uh, uh, rf control so this is a 50 mega 50 watt rf power and plasma is ready for you to work on the substrate okay you can go up to 150 watt power but that is not really necessary for our operation create this plasma is enough to etch the surface or clean the surface so i think you can clearly see the plasma inside pink color now let's see if the plasma goes away when i reduce the rf power so i'm just going back i am reducing the rf power just look at the chamber keep looking at the chamber Okay, I am reducing the RF power now. You can see the intensity going down. And when I go to zero power, power, it will become that plasma will get extinguished. Now the plasma is gone. Plasma is gone, and uh, we have come back to a no plasma state. Okay, now that we know, so we have saw seen the plasma. now how do we switch off the system now first thing so what did we follow what is the sequence that we followed we created a vacuum we let oxygen inside then we switched on the rf power when then we saw the plasma getting formed now we switch, we will switch off the rf power first okay so i am turning off the rf power okay now we are turning off the rf power that is the first switching switch down procedure turn off the rf power our power is turned on next what you have to do you have to close your gas supply so i am closing the gas supply gas supply is closed now we have to switch off your pump 
because you don't want to pump it pump is switched off you can hear sirens the pump is not working now now but we have created vacuum inside right the vacuum level is still quite low but we want to use it immediately so we can vent air into the chamber so for that we have to go here air valve closed is there now here in that we have to put open air now you can hear the air coming into the chamber so parallelly you can see that the pressure here has become back to the high value now you are ready to open the chamber now we are ready to open the chamber and we are opening it we are able to open it we can go inside and see it will not be hot because it is rf energy next step uh, we will try to clean a glass substrate and a pdms membrane and see if we can bond the two that is also another application of oxygen plasma okay so that that we will do now in another uh, a minute we will do that as a next step we will be bonding this glass slide with this pdms membrane you can see the membrane pdms flexible material so what we will do is we will place both of them inside the oxygen plasma both the surfaces will get activated and then we will take it out from the plasma treatment and see if they will bond okay it's going to be really interesting let's do this let me keep these two inside the chamber okay so uh, we are going to place the glass slide inside the chamber so the slide is placed now we will flip and place the surface which we want to bond nicely clean inside it's be it's better that you keep it sufficiently inside and the pdms and the glass should not be one above the other it should be separated so that both gets treated by the plasma properly okay now i have kept both of them inside i'm closing the chamber now we will do the same thing that i did before we just do just look at the chamber we will create plasma again so what i what i will do i will switch on the system okay first i will turn on the pump so the pump will create the vacuum first now uh, we'll wait for it to go below 20 at least so i'm waiting for the uh, vacuum to be sufficiently large so in vacuum if you try to open the chamber you won't be able to open it it's tight air seal oh but we can, you can actually connect here only oh so we have created the uh, uh, pressure i mean vacuum it is 9 kpascal so now we can open the oxygen supply so oxygen is coming in i will let it in so you can see the pressure has uh, increased because of the oxygen inlet input now we will switch on the rf power yeah now uh, we have uh, switched on the oxygen supply now we will turn on the rf power and keep it at around 50 watt so we have kept it at around 65 watt so the plasma has been formed let's look at the chamber so now we are looking at the plasma uh, it is at 65 watt power you can see the glass slide and the pdms member inside soaked in the plasma we need to do this plasma treatment for like 5 to 10 minutes after that we will take it out and see how they are bonding okay you can nicely see the pink color plasma bathing the slide and the uh, pdms membrane inside in the plasma okay so uh, we will uh, after 5 minutes we will take out uh, these two and try to bond them so now uh, we have done around 10 minutes of plasma treatment on the glass substrate and the pdms membrane now we will follow the taking out process or the uh, uh, uh,
bonding process which we will try after we uh, evacuate the chamber. So let's first switch off the plasma. Then I will close the gas vent. I will make the plasma voltage to zero. Then I will turn off the pump. Okay, I have turned off the pump, turned off the pump. Now I will vent it. So I have vented it, everything done. I can switch even switch off the system now. I have switched off the system. Now we will open the chamber. Take out the samples carefully. I have taken it out and I will try to keep the surfaces that have been plasma treated on top of each other. Okay, so I have kept the PDMS membrane and the class substrate on top of each other. The surface that was exposed to the plasma is touching the glass slide of the PDMS membrane and the glass slide's surface that is treated as uh, touching the PDMS membrane basically. So I have kept both of them together and they have bonded. So I have kept I have kept both of them together and they have bonded. You can shake it and see they are not coming out, they are nicely bonded. Okay, so this is what so they this way we can make microfluidic channels on this PDMS membrane and bond it with a glass substrate that has sensors and without using any glue. This is the advantage of using plasma bond. Okay, so we have bonded it nicely. Okay, uh, I hope you understood the you, resourcefulness of this tool and you found this module useful. Thank you. I hope uh, you found uh, this tool to be quite resourceful and you understood the various uses of this tool and how it forms an integral part of the microfabrication sensors and actuators uh, course and uh, how it is important for uh, making developing systems that uh, sense physical changes uh, in phenomena. Uh, uh, you can go over the video again, understand the concepts that we have discussed while trying to understand how a real world system works. We have even looked at how we were installing it, how what are the individual components of the system, how each component is important. Uh, so this is one example of how a system is tested from box to working condition and through that journey you also understood the concepts that are involved in it and how it fits well with the idea of sensors and actuators. Uh, we will be happy to see you in the next module, till then, thank you.